So how do you know if a relay or contactor is good? Okay, remember, a relay and contactor uses a magnetic coil in order to open or close a set of contacts inside. So this is a contactor over here, this is a relay. Okay, let's talk about the contactor first. I'm gonna pull the cover off this one. Okay, hopefully I won't lose these screws because that's always a pain. So let's pull the cover off this one and let's take a look inside what's happening. When the contactor energizes, these two points get this whole plunger assembly that's in here, and I know it's tough to see, gets pulled in. Okay, so what we do is this coil gets energized with, in this case, 24 volts, creates a magnetic field and pulls the coil in. Now, if you have a contactor that's not working, okay, you take a voltage reading across here, you're still gonna get source voltage whether or not it's working. But what you do have to do is you have to disconnect the wires from the coil and go ahead and take a resistance reading, okay? Your resistance reading should show some number, okay? Most often for a 24 volt contactor, it's any place between like 10 and 19 ohms. Okay, so in this case, we're at 12 ohms. We know we have a good circuit through that coil. We know it's not a direct zero, which would be a short, and we know we're in still good shape. Now, as always, one of the other things that I do is I like taking a reading from to the back plate of the contactor, okay? I wanna make sure I don't have a short to ground in there, and we don't. Then what you can do is you can put your re leads on each side of the contactor, again, with power off, and push in. When you push in, you should get zero. When you release, you should get OL because it's basically a switch and then do that to do the same thing on the other side. If you get a resistance when you push that in, it just means that the contactor has some damaged points on it. It's not making a clean connection and that can actually cause you problems. Now, point one, I'm not gonna worry about. Okay, release it, I get oh well. So that's how you check a contactor to see if it's actually good or bad. Well, what about a relay? Okay, relays don't fail that often on the points in the same manner the contactor does. Let me just put this cover back on to leave things as I found them. By the way, you should do that. You should check those points anytime you do a preventative maintenance on any air conditioning system. Okay, and again, you do this with the power off. This can be dangerous. There can be very high voltage in there. Okay, so over here we have a relay. Now we have pins one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I have a coil connection down there at the bottom. Okay, my coil is just like the contactor coil. If I put my meter, if I put my ohm meter across those pins, okay, I get a resistance reading of someplace close to 18.6, 18.4. That's telling me the coil's good. Now, as I do with everything else, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the metal that's behind this. I wanna know if I have a short. I have OL. Why do I look for a short? Because if you have random fuses blowing, random breaker blowing, sometimes it can be actually the contactor and relay coils, not the device itself. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go between pins one and two. Pin one and two. Between pin one and two, we should have a closed circuit. Okay, why? Because one to two is a normally closed. And we do. Between one, three and six, I should have an open, normally open. And that will re be repeated up here with pins one, two, and three. I just gotta get my leads on there. Okay, that's on one. Okay, one to three should be open. And one to two is closed. So my coil's good. 
my normally open and normally closed are good. If this, con if this relay is not switching properly, it's a mechanical problem inside. Okay, and you'll find that when you power it up. But in this video, I just wanted to talk about resistances.